buddy Nostalgia Scott coming to you guys with part 4 of Spyro 2 Ripto's Rage for the Xbox. So, we are going to be doing Aquaria Towers, the final level that we can get 100% on in this world. And when we get to the next world, we can do more. <laughs> That's kind of mean. So what are you guys up to? The funny looking guys with the shock sticks have drained all our water. We can't get it back unless someone activates the switches they're guarding. Yeah, so this is a water themed level. And what's interesting about this level is it doesn't actually have the water to begin with. So that makes you question, well, what are we doing here if it's a water level and there's no water? Well, cool fun fact about this level is the switches that they're making you activate are actually very important. Because when you activate one, it does this. It triggers a bunch of water, so then it becomes a water level. Now honestly, this is one of my least favorite levels in the game. Not because it's a bad level, I'm just not a big fan of a lot of water levels. Like, I, I do think their ambience looks pretty cool in most games, but in this game, not not really. I'm not a big fan of it because especially, like, the way that they darken the, um, whatchamacallit. They, like, darken the, 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 the coloring of the game when you're in the water. So, like, see how we are right now? When we go under here, you get this blue haze. And it's just, I don't really care for it. Now, there is a skill point here, and it's to destroy all seaweed. Which, when I show you, when I see a seaweed, I'll show you guys. I'm pretty sure there's one over here. Now, don't go in the water with these sharks. Yeah, there's a seaweed right there. These sharks will actually kill you instantly. Because they're just metal sharks, and metal sharks are honestly terrifying, and we don't want anything to do with them. Also, you guys have been really enjoying this series, surprisingly enough. I was expecting immediately playing Spyro 2 after Spyro 1 to be kind of a flop, like it usually is on my channel. But you guys are actually thoroughly enjoying most of the content I upload. You guys are also really, really, really enjoying the Fairly Odd Parents Let's Play that I have going on. And I'm surprised, because it's a completely blind one. I have never played it, nor have I ever watched that, uh, that game played. But it's cool to see that you guys are so on board with it. And I'm not complaining at all. Like, it's just... It's, it's an interesting game. And he pre-fired that, so when I went... Oh my god, the double hit. He pre-fired that, so I get electrocuted. But yeah, I'm surprised that you guys are enjoying certain series as much as you are on my channel. And I'm grateful, because you guys have been increasing the subscriber count of the channel drastically over like the last few days like it went from 41 subscribers or something to 65 just over the weekend alone so today is monday the oops i almost knocked over the uh the hardware recording thing here it is monday february 20th so hi spider yeah you must be tougher than you look to get here all the same, you won't be able to get past the metal sharks up ahead. I suppose I could let you borrow my submarine, though. For a modest fee, of course. For 100 gems, honestly, though, for invincibility for a section, honestly not bad. Also, I kind of like the green sparks there. A pleasure doing business with you, Spyro. This submarine is 100% shockproof. I guarantee it. And honestly, he isn't lying. Like, see? Just straight up don't even get phased. It's also the cheapest thing money but Actually, no. I think there's one other, like, portal or something he opens up in World 2 that's really cheap. Other than that, he normally increasingly charges you, not... Also, in the original game, Spyro would actually pick up those gems up there before he would fall down. Also, I'm pretty sure this is the last switch in the entire level. You're probably wondering, we haven't gotten a single orb or anything yet, and we're already essentially at the end of the level. But then you guys may have noticed that in those shark sections, there were a lot of gems and stuff that we couldn't get to. So with this, it now connects both wor both like rooms, so now we can go back here. There's also those numbered towers. 
But see, because now we have the ability to swim everywhere, that means we can now get the gems everywhere. Okay, so he's pointing in there. Yeah, we, we can't go in there. Because there's sharks in there, and we don't want to die. That's not how we roll sparks. We're not going to suicide. I do want the sheep over here. Though. Where's the sheep? Oh, it's over there. Of course the sheep's over here. Why wouldn't it be? Mr. Sheep. Thank you. Oh, there's another sheep. Nice. Wait, no, that was just the dead sheep, I guess. Its body took forever. Um, yeah, okay, and then he's pointing upward, yes, because guess what? There actually is more to this level than one would think. Because, guess what? There is a hole in the surface of the level, which actually takes you outside, or is it technically outside if you're underwater? And there's two orbs here with Hunter, which is a super easy challenge, and then there's one with another guy up here. Yeah, all the orbs are literally in one section of the level. Which I'm fine with, it's just kind of weird. It is allow you to focus on the level though before you go adventuring, which is cool. And unlike Spyro 3, which adds like these little like mini game doorways to like different zones, this one doesn't do that. This one's just straight up, yeah, everything's within the world. So the worlds are generally smaller than they are in Spyro 3. But the world itself in Spiral 3 is generally pretty short. Yeah, there's the seahorse guy there that also has a challenge for us. And things like that. Yeah, and you see a lot of the seaweed up here too, I bet. So, you know for a fact that we're going to have to do that. Now, there are gems that are up top on, like, these towers. Like, on the, the little arches of the towers. I'm pretty sure these ones are gold gems. Now, I know there's a gold gem somewhere up on one of these. Oh no, I guess that one was a gold gem. Maybe it was that one I was thinking of. Yeah, because he seems to be pointing underground now, so it seems like we're done. Is he pointing underground or what? Or is he pointing like... Okay, no, he is pointing. Okay, so we got all the gems here. We might as well go and do the um, Hunter minigame over here, because it's super easy. Like, really easy. I've been trying to tame my new pet man array, but he just won't obey me. Hey, you're just about the right size to ride on his back. Great! Hop on his back and guide him through each of the bubble rings as they appear. And remember, he's brand new, so try not to get him dented or scratched up. He's not a car. You only have to go through nine rings. Also, my issue with the rings in this, they're not animated again. They used to be animated, like they actually look like bubbles. Now they're just like spheres. Which I thought was kind of lame. Now, my sensitivity is a little messed up because I'm playing with my Xbox sensor facing the wrong way. Well done. I suppose I owe you something for that. Here, take this orb. I found it in one of my flippers. Why do you have orbs in your flippers exactly, Hunter? Please tell me. Now that the manta ray's tamed, I'd love to get him into racing shape. Care to take him through a harder course? Yeah, why not? Okay, good luck. Just, just good luck. That's it. Difficulty 3. I love how this one's only one star more difficult, yet is substantially more difficult than the first one. Even though that's not, I mean, that's not saying much. It just requires a few tighter turns. Plus you're like a lot closer to him in this one, so it's a lot easier to miss the rings. Now that, that, that little, that last guy there with the orb, his actually requires you to backtrack throughout the level. So that's why we're doing this one first, if you're wondering. And that was easy. Incredible! You've got real talent. I could use a partner like you. You can have the orb I found in my other flipper too. Nice. And we got the last, or the last orb, the second orb from Hunter. How many were we at? We're at 16. All right. Now let's go talk to Mr. Seahorse there, and then we can go and backtrack and do the rest of the level. Now where was he again? Oh, there he is. For some reason, he doesn't have an orb above his head, which is odd, but we'll talk to him. The water workers have kidnapped six of my children and have hidden them in the top of each of these numbered towers. I borrowed some explosives to blast open the tower doors. If you can make it to the top of the six numbered towers, my children will be safe. Yeah, this is a four-star challenge. I don't know about that. So there's like a gimmick to each tower and you have to do them in order. So that one just has an electric little like gateway that you have to watch out for. And then I'll blow up in that one. This game honestly is like a lot of cutscenes and mini cutscenes compared to like even like Spiral 3. Spiral 3 is just kinda there, I guess. 
That seahorse had a weird seizure going on. And then three and four are down there. So now we have to backtrack, but now, before we do that, actually, before I do the last one, what I'll do is I'll do the rest of the level. We might actually be able to do the last level before the boss in this episode, too, which is pretty cool. So this one should have a crab in it. Yeah, just a singular crab. I don't know how that's much of a challenge, but I guess it is. And we'll do this one, and then we can go and do some more of this stuff. Um, four is right here. This one, I believe, is three electric... Is it? I guess this is two. Oh, never mind. It was three. I was right. You can technically, if you get hit, you can just charge through. I believe the next two are a mix of. No. Pretty sure one is a mix of electricity and crabs, and then the other one is like, um. Oh, what you call it? Uh. Like moving electricity. Now, to deal with the seaweed, what you actually have to do is you actually have to use the fire breath. Yeah, you wouldn't expect to use fire underwater, but you do. So you have to find all the seaweed around here and just nuke it like this. Because it creates like a... I guess like this is super heated. Well, I guess technically fire breath could kind of work underwater in the sense that like it's just hot steam, I guess, is a better way of putting it than it is anything else, you know? Now hopefully I can get all of them up here before we have to go back or run out because uh, I think we got it all. Because now what we can do is we can also bring this back uh, where we came from. Like back this way and go deal with some stuff over here. Like these sharks. Because remember it is technically the only way to kill the sharks like I mentioned before. It kind of slightly... I think it used to home in, like, in the original, but I don't think it does in this game. Though it is pretty darn accurate. Now, I think there might be one more seaweed back this way that we missed, because... I guess not. So I guess we'll just collect the gems in here now, which is pretty nice. And remember, there's only 400 gems, so that's why I didn't go over the, the gem totals in this uh, level, because we already know how many gems are here. Alright, so... Oh no, there was a seaweed in there. Gosh darn it. I still think we'll have time to do the next level, because the next level's kind of weird where you don't actually do that much. It's kind of one of those levels where you um, have to backtrack to. Like, you can get about 80% of the level done, or actually it might be less than 80%, because orbs take up a good chunk of the level, so it might be more than 80%. I'm not actually entirely sure. Yeah, then when you get all of them, you'll know that you get the skill point. I still have to go back and do the hockey one, though, for you guys, because I haven't done that yet. This is the first time I've recorded this uh, game in over a week, despite only having three episodes uploaded. I did finish Wrath of Cortex and Enter the Dragonfly, though, so if you're wondering, like, um, why I'm, like, playing this game now, that's why. Or, like, why you see a mass, like, upload of, like, one game or one or two games for a while. I still have to finish Fairly Odd Parents as well. So that's another game I have to do. Now where's the last of the um seaweed? Was it down here? I have to find the last of the seaweed now that I meant now that I think about it. Also the gems, there were gems. I bet you wouldn't think about this, but there are gems over here. Because that's where they like to hide them. There we go, we have all the gems now. Now we have to go down here to this tower, and then I guess I have to look for the uh, seaweed. Yeah, I was right, this one had electricity and crabs. That sounds like a bad time. Alright, so now we just have the last one. Now I don't know where the last seaweed is. I bet you it's up top, right? I bet you I missed it up top. Uh, now which way is the way I have to go? Oh, I know where it is. It's the, um... The shark section. Yeah, this this section. We have to go... We can now go through here. Now, I don't think there's any seaweed down here anymore. So I'm pretty sure the last seaweed is back up there. Like, uh, up top. I really wish you could track it, but you can't. Now this one's kind of an interesting, uh, level. 
because you have to follow the electricity. The you kind of have to be patient. Anyways, we got the last orb now. You did it! Now we can swim in peace. I heard that you're collecting orbs. Please take this one. All right. Thank you very much. We got our first or final orb here. I was gonna say first orb. Now, it'll say level complete, but we know for a fact that we are not 100% complete this level. 100% complete this level? We have not 100%... We have not 100% complete this level yet. Actually, I'm pretty sure... Isn't there a seaweed behind... I thought there was seaweed behind him. I know I'm missing... Oh, there it is! Okay, yeah, we did miss the seaweed day up here, so we have to come back. Kind of a waste of time, but at the same time, it is necessary to 100... Where am I going? The, the fire is literally right here. You get the most time up top out of any of the uh, parts of the level. Also, this was a lot more centralized in the original. For whatever reason, this one kind of made it uh, off to the side. There we go, skill point. Now we can just... Oh yeah, we also don't have the talisman. Never mind, we never 100% completed the level yet. We have to go back and talk to this little guy right here. Our world is wet again. We all want you to have this talisman of Aquaria Towers to remember us by. Nice. And it's a seashell by the seashore. And there we go. Now we can leave because we 100% of the level. Now we get to go to Sunny Beach, a level we can't complete. <laughs> Nice. Yeah, so next episode, we should be able to 100% or get our totals back up to 100%. There's only, I think, two levels that you can't 100% in the next world, but you can technically get all the gems outside of one level. So next we have Sunny Beach, a beautiful, vibrant level. But with kind... Eh, it's not the greatest level. I'm not a big fan of World 1 in this game. World 3 is my favorite. Ah, uh, so we got a bunch of turtles and more water workers. Yeah, you'll notice that throughout this game, that a lot of the gimmicks, or uh, gimmicks of the level, oh yeah, I still have to put these guys onto the platforms, is that, um, enemies will spend multiple levels and usually help out different groups, usually one being the enemy in one level and them being the, your friend in the next. This world, not so much the water workers are just bad. Hi, Spyro. It's a good thing you're here. If you can help shepherd those baby turtles over there to safety, I'd be mighty grateful. Prince Tortoise. Yeah, despite being t turtles, your name is Tortoise. Eh, it's funny. I like tortoises and turtles, though. They're really cool animals. I love tortoises and snapping turtles the most. They just look super cool. Now, there is kind of a little secret that, as a kid, I didn't originally know was here. It only took me about, like, one playthrough, though, to figure this out. But, yeah, there's a little alcove over here that you can get to that has, you know, goodies. And it actually has a ton of gems. In this level, I think you're only missing, like, it's like 20 gems or something. Like, it's a really small amount of gems that you're missing. Just because you need the second ability, and the other one, well, actually, you need the second ability to get to both spots. And the ability, honestly, is one that's in, that was in um, A Hero's Tale. And, actually, I don't think it was in A Hero's Tale. That was in Enter the Dragonfly. But, yeah, it's... So yeah, you know these guys are the exact same, except instead of wearing scuba gear now, they just have like their wetsuit on. These guys, I'm not entirely sure what they are, and if they're actually the water workers or not, they're just giant duck-billed weirdos. But yeah, um, kind of like Glimmer, it's the exact same ability you need for Glimmer. Which I found weird, that this game never actually forced you to come back with the third ability, they only made you come back with the second ability, and then in the second world you have to come back with the third ability. But yeah, you need the ladder, uh, the climbing ability, which at least in this game actually made look more than just a PNG. And interesting enough, 
Wait, that one actually made it. It's not supposed to make it to the switch. You're supposed to flame that one twice, but I think in the remake they made certain things a little too easy. We also need to kill 11 enemies to trigger this mini game. The water Oops. workers have captured most of our baby turtles, and the boxes they put them in are incredibly strong. With a more powerful flame attack, maybe you could break open the boxes and release them. Okay, Gromit. Why is your name Gromit? That's not a very turtle tortoise name. But yeah, we need to kill 11 enemies to get the super flame breath. You'll see things like this where they're in there and stuff. Funny how we don't technically free them from that little prison, we just free them from the box. Despite them technically being trapped in there, which is kind of sad. But, whatever. At least we got lots of gems we can get here right now. We can't get them all like... Wait a minute, that didn't hit me, game. You troll. These guys you can either charge into or just flame them above the water. But now we have enough for the flame breath. So what we can do is we can now go and uh, deal with these. One thing I don't like, though, is how... Hold, like, when you press Y, triangle, X, depending on whatever controller you're on, um, what it'll do is it'll kind of, like, lock... Well, not what it'll do. Like, what it kind of will do. It, do, it just straight-up locks into place. Which is a big gripe I have with this game. Now, I know for a fact there's one down here. That's why I kind of ran over here. Now we just have to get the ones at the beginning of the level and like through the middle. And can, can these baby turtles get out of the way? Your hitboxes are annoying. Also, this water is kind of green. Which is kind of cool because the water in this game is always slightly different. It's never just the same. And once again, to get the other two orbs, you're going to need to be able to climb again. So to get all the gems and to climb, or to get the uh, orbs, you're going to need to climb. You can only get one orb here, and that's the one with the baby turtles. Which is interesting, I guess. I don't know why this level in particular is so hellbent on specifically using ladders, but it, it's, it is what it is. Like, it's nothing... It's not difficult. I'm not saying it's hard or anything like that, it's just kind of annoying. Wait, am I missing? Oh, no, never mind. I was about to say, like... Now, I'm gonna save the breath, or save the last one for later, because I want to grab this one. Can you actually let me up there, please? You have to glide for a specific amount of time, though, before you can use your hover, if you're wondering why I couldn't hover. It's not because... I wasn't pressing the button, it's just because of that. Now, we just need to go and do this, and yeah, man, this is- I don't even think this is gonna be a half an hour long episode. Which is... which is good. Wait, I, how did I miss that enemy? I swear I killed him, but whatever. And boom! Shakalaka, there we go. Most impressive. Please take this sacred... Uh, thingamajig as a token of our everlasting gratitude. Gratitude. Thank you for the first and only orb we can get here right now. Now all we can do is literally just go get the talisman, leave, and end the episode. Because we've already done the speedway here. Which, by the way, there's two in world... Oh yeah, you guys can see the gems over there. Um, There's two in world 2 and one in world 3. World 3, I think, has the same amount of levels as world 2. Or, World 2. World 1 and World uh, 3, I think, have the same amount of levels. World 2 is the biggest, because it has the most levels. And, if not the longest levels in the entire Spyro franchise, outside of maybe, like, a Legend of Spyro. Or The Legend of Spyro. Is it a Legend? The Legend? Anyways, let's grab the talisman. Thank you, young dragon. The baby turtles will be safe up here. Please, take this talisman as a token of our gratitude. And you said gratitude, while the other one said gratitude. Anyways, we got like a turtle medallion. And that's all we can complete, because... Yeah, we're only missing 20 gems. I, I knew it, it's exactly 20 gems. Anyways, yeah, we did it. Man, talk about a painful sounding belly flop, holy lord. <laughs> 2023! That's funny, because that's exactly what year we're in.
Anyways, if you guys enjoyed this video, please remember to leave a like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications, join the Discord and Patreon in the links below, and in the next episode we will be taking on the first of three bosses, which also is a skill point, which is actually surprisingly easy. And it's weird, because so in World 2 you'll get transported to the boss, World 3 you won't, you never did, and in World 1 you don't, but in the originals it would teleport you to the boss. Uh, like this area right here in World 1 and 2 if you completed getting all the talismans. So, I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.